Hello everyone, this is Adam Morris with LoneStarBall.com and I'm checking in with you with our very latest Texas Rangers Lone Star Ball video update. Well, as I'm recording this, the Rangers have just lost 2 of 3 in Anaheim. Their lead over the Angels in the AL West is 5 games. And uh, more critically, Roy Oswald has been scratched from his scheduled start on Monday against the Boston Red Sox. Uh, and Colby Lewis is questionable for his start on Tuesday. Uh, Roy Oswald is a back issue that the Rangers think isn't serious, isn't going to result in disabled this time. Colby Lewis is having a recurrence of the forearm soreness that uh, had sidelined him before, and they are less confident that uh, Colby Lewis may uh, will be able to avoid uh, the disabled list, but that still is a little bit up in the air. In any case, uh, the result has been uh, almost a panic, it seems like, from fans and some of the media uh, that, oh my God, the Rangers, they, their pitching is falling apart. we got to get some pitching in here right now. Uh, John Paul Morosi tweeted last night after the news about Oswald and Lewis came out, is there any doubt now that the Rangers need to go out there and get a starting pitcher to solidify their rotation? Uh, some of the local beat writers have said, well, you know, the Rangers have said they don't want to make a big move, but, you know, this, this is probably going to force their hand. They're going to have to do something now. And... I think it's important to take a step back and think about this. All right, we've got you, Darvish, Matt Harrison, Derek Holland, who are all in the rotation. They're all healthy right now. You know, they're having varying degrees of success, but they're there and they're making their starts. Roy Oswalt supposedly is not likely to go on the disabled list. He might, but this back issue is not something that is going to be career ending or season ending from what we know right now. Colby Lewis, at this point, it doesn't sound like it's something where he's going to have to miss a lot of time. It's not something that sounds like he's going to be out the rest of the year. And we've got Neftali Feliz, who is a couple of rehab starts in the minors away from being able to rejoin the Rangers rotation. That gives you six viable starters. Martin Perez is available to make a spot start as need be. Uh, he's acquitted himself well during his time in the major leagues. At seven, Justin Grimm can step up and make a spot start if you need somebody just to come in. And so the Rangers have some pitching depth that puts them in a situation where they have guys who can make starts for them. What they need to focus on is who is going to make their October starts, who's going to be in that postseason rotation. Right now, assuming everybody's healthy, you're going to have Colby Lewis, Matt Harrison, you Darvish and either Derek Holland or Roy, Roy Oswalt in your postseason rotation. And so if we're talking about going out and getting a starting pitcher, you need to have somebody who not only is better than those guys, but is good enough that it makes sense to give up prospects or money in order to upgrade from Derek Holland or Roy Oswalt to whoever that pitcher is in the rotation. Now, if you're talking about a Ryan Dempster or Wandy Rodriguez or one of these sort of random guys that are out there available for trade, that's just that's not going to do you any good. There's no point in the Rangers at this point going out and making a deal like that. Now, if you're talking about Cole Hamels or Zach Greinke, those are the two pitchers who I think really represent a meaningful upgrade for the Rangers rotation. But then the question is cost, because both of those guys are free agents at the end of the season. You don't get draft pick compensation anymore. The question is going to be, okay, is it worth giving up a Mike Holt? Is it worth giving up a Martin Perez in order to get Cole Hamels, for example, so that you can then upgrade from Holland to Hamels for four or five postseason starts? And I just don't know that that sort of upgrade is necessarily worth it. Now, the Rangers may disagree. They may say Josh Hamilton's a free agent at the end of the season. Mike Napoli's a free agent. Colby Lewis is a free agent. Mike Adams, Koji Uehara. A lot of these guys have the ability to walk at the end of the season. This could be a very different and not as good team in 2013. We need to strike while we've got the chance right now. And that, that's a defensible position. You know, I, I, I think Cole Hamels would increase the Rangers' chances of having success in the postseason. But, you know, I think if we're not talking about a Hamels or a Greinke, there's just no reason to be talking about going out there and trading for a starting pitcher. Now, if Colby Lewis is done for the year, if Roy Oswalt's back situation is such that he can't pitch at all, you know, if Neftali Feliz has a relapse, you know, then that's maybe a different situation. But right now, given what we know right now, don't need to panic. Let's all take a deep breath. Let's get through these next few games. Let's see how Colby Lewis and Roy Oswald bounce back from these uh, injury issues. And let's keep the focus where it needs to be on what's going to make this team the best in October, not what's going to help the team just get through a week or 10 days here in July and August. So on that note, 
Uh, that's all we've got on our latest Texas Rangers video update. For more news, scores, commentary, stats, be sure to check out LoneStarBall.com and be sure to subscribe to our Lone Star Ball YouTube channel for more video updates. <laughs>